Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to deploy Kubernetes with KubeNow on OpenStack. KubeNow is a tool that we have developed at uh, Uppsala University in Sweden, me and some colleagues of mine, in order to be able to deploy Kubernetes on uh, various cl cloud providers. It supports uh, Amazon, Google, OpenStack and Azure at the moment. But we are going to talk about uh, OpenStack only today. So I'm going to follow the documentation, uh, the getting started uh, guide, and hopefully you, you're going to be able to reproduce uh, the steps on your um, OpenStack tenancy. So let's start by the prerequisites, you need to install Docker on your computer. So, KubeNow wraps around some uh, uh, well-known tools for cloud contextualization. So, it's mainly Terraform and Ansible. And uh, since uh, in our experience it's a little bit difficult with the version of these products, uh, we decided to put everything in a Docker container. So this is why you you need to install Docker on your uh, laptop or workstation. Next step is to get Cube now. So we are gonna pull this Docker container. Super fast in my case because I already had it on my computer. And then we're gonna install a command line interface that wraps around this Docker container. So in this way, you won't need to uh, type docker run and uh, a bunch of tedious uh, commands. It's going to ask you the password. Here we go. So now we install cube now and let's deploy it on OpenStack. So I'm in my OpenStack tenancy from my uh, university. The first thing you need to do, you probably already know about it, is to download the credential uh, for the client. So the way you do it is by clicking on access and security. And this is going to vary a little bit uh, depending on the OpenStack tenancy. And then you need to download this RC file and you need to source it. So you click here, you download and you source it in your terminal. I've already done this, so I'm gonna skip this. And everything is written in the com documentation, so I'm quite sure you're gonna make it. So, whoops. The first thing we need to do is to initialize a deployment. So, we use the KN, which stands for cube now, is the command line interface that we installed before. Init, OpenStack, which is the cloud provider that we intend to use, and then we're gonna give a name to this deployment. Let's call it YouTube. YouTube test. So, it will create a directory. Uh, we are gonna locate into it. It's basically, it's name uh, after the name that you gave to your deployment. And inside this, we have a bunch of uh, files. So, most of this stuff is for uh, power users and uh, I'm sure you're gonna get there, but for today, let's see, let's look at the basics only. So here you have a SSH keeper that is that was created for you for this deployment. And then we have a Terraform configuration file, and this is what we need to uh, go ahead and uh, modify a bit. So open it with your favorite text file uh, editor. I like Atom. So 
Here we go. So, you have quite a bit of stuff inside here, but again, there are a few things you need to, um, to fill in in order to uh, be able to uh, deploy a simple um, Kubernetes cluster. So first you need to give a prefix to your cluster. So this will be used for all of the resources that are gonna get uh, created inside your uh, tenancy. So let's call it YouTube. Then you need to figure out the floating IP pool name uh, for your uh, OpenStack tenancy. So inside this Docker container that is uh, shipped with uh, Cube now, we installed the OpenStack client. So the way you do it is by typing kn OpenStack uh, network list, if I'm not wrong. So it's gonna run the OpenStack client. So usually the floating IP pool is the name of the external network in your OpenStack tenancy. So we are gonna copy it. and paste it in this place. So after this, we're gonna need the external network uh, uh, ID, and we are gonna get it from here. So all we need to run is this command to, net, to, to get the information that we need. Then we need to uh, decide what flavor we want to use for uh, our uh, Kubernetes master. So again, we can figure out the available flavor names with the OpenStack command line interface. So we run kn OpenStack flavor list, if I'm not wrong. Wow, I can guess everything at the first, uh, I'm such a nerd. Anyhow, we are gonna use the, this flavor. So this might vary on your OpenStack. And we are gonna use the same for our nodes. And uh, yeah, if you're curious, you can give a look to the, all of the other options, but. Now we want to keep it simple for this first uh, tutorial. So this should be everything. We can close this file. And let's go in the overview. No, I like the instances view better. So once we have done this, uh, deploying Kubernetes should be as simple as KN apply. So now we are applying this configuration to our uh, OpenStack tenancy. So this should be quite fast. I'm gonna comment you, uh, comment all of the things that uh, are gonna happen. So the first thing that uh, it was happening is that it was trying to import the KubeNow image inside the OpenStack. So in my account, it's already present, so it was super fast. And uh, the reason why we import the, the images is that we want Kubernetes deployments to be fast. So we don't want to waste time in uh, installing Kubernetes inside all of the machines that you are gonna start in your cluster. So 
we import the image that has uh, all of the necessary software already installed and then we bootstrap uh, the virtual machines from that image. So the first time you're gonna deploy is gonna take uh, a little bit more because it needs to download it in your computer and upload it to the OpenStack tenancy. But then after this is gonna be quite fast. So now it's creating all of the resources that we need uh, in order to uh, create to, to run Kubernetes. So it's gonna create a router, it's gonna attach it to the um, public network. It's gonna create a, a, a private network that is gonna get attached to this uh, router. And then it's gonna start all of the instances on top of this private uh, network. All right, now the Kubernetes cluster is uh, properly deployed and provisioned. I stopped the recording in between since I didn't know what to tell you in order to uh, entertain you while this was happening. Uh, but let's see what we can do with uh, uh, this Kubernetes cluster. So as long as you are inside this directory that um, we uh, created before with the kn init command uh, you can uh, run kubectl without uh, logging to the master or in any of the nodes all you have to do is to run kn kubectl and um, whatever command like for example get nodes And this is going to run kubectl inside the Docker container uh, that we pulled in the beginning of this uh, tutorial. So you don't have to install anything on your computer. Then let's say you want to SSH into the master. You can run kn ssh. And this is going to work again as long as you are inside the directory. So now I'm into the master and I can just run kubectl. Okay, now I log out from the master and I think something fun that we can do is to deploy a little application. Uh, so I can show you how simple it is with cube now. So, KubeNow uses uh, the traffic reverse proxy in order to serve, um, for example, internet pages from uh, the microservices that you are going to run inside uh, your cluster. So, let's say we want to run the classic uh, cheese deployment, that is the um, example that I'm sure you may many of you uh, have already seen so it's the one that they always show for uh, the traffic reverse proxy but if you if you have never seen it it's very it's very simple so basically this is a deployment that uh, deploys three web pages and for each web page there is a a, a two replication factor and uh, basically the edge node that in our case is the master is gonna um, serve those pages uh, doing uh, load balancing as well. So the first thing we need to do is to check what uh, domain name we got from uh, Nipio. So basically we got this one is the floating IP of the master dot nip dot io so this is gonna resolve to our master and then we can use helm in order to install our application so the the big picture here is that if you want to have an on-demand on -demand distributed application you can uh, package it in an helm package so helm is the default package manager for uh, for kubernetes and then you can just run uh, a single command after you uh, deploy your Kubernetes cluster in order to get uh, 
your, your stack up and running. So we have to tell our domain name to this uh, application. Oops. Sorry. So we're going to copy it from here. And this is going to deploy this uh, simple cheese deployment. All right, so now what you, we can do, we can do KN cube CTL get pods to make sure that everything is up and running. So right now we have these uh, three services, as I was telling you before. So with a replication factor of two. So some of them are uh, already running, some are still creating. And by the way, you can SSH into the master and do the same thing that I'm doing right now. Okay, now everything is running. So what we can do is that we can go on the internet and we can see our services. And these are just some uh, cheese web pages. I'm going to show you the last one. All right. Uh, then, of course, uh, when you are done with, uh, with everything, what you want to do is to uh, remove all of the resources so you don't, uh, um, you don't take them for other users in your OpenStack uh, tenancy. So all you have to do is KN destroy and everything is going to get deleted. So, I will not uh, bother you by, uh, by uh, showing you this process, like it's just going to delete everything. And this uh, ends my, my tutorial. It was a bit off the cuff. I didn't uh, have a script, but it shows the purpose. So, I hope you're going to find it interesting. You can find everything on this... Um, uh, on the KubeNow documentation, which I'm going to link in the description. And uh, if you encounter any problem, please go on the KubeNow GitHub and open an issue. Me or my, one of my colleagues are going to help you. And uh, yeah, have fun. <laughs>